Welcome to Fairview Baptist Church in Lindsay. Not only do we want to minister to the people who regularly attend Fairview, but we also want to minister to those who live within the city of Kortha Lakes with the good news of Jesus Christ. Come on in and, and join us for worship. It is our prayer that you'll be blessed. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Now, when I say that, what is one of the first things that come to your mind when we say Thanksgiving? Hey, there you go. Food, turkey, what else? Being thankful? Family. What else? Being together, family together, God's blessings, friends. Great. When I uh, think of Thanksgiving, there's some traditions that maybe you do as a family. I know uh, we, we did one last night, and uh, we had our dinner last night, and then we headed out to a corn maze. And uh, we had a blast. Seven acres, and you run around like idiots, and you try to scare each other, and, and uh, it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, um, I didn't do it last year, but the kids went out last year and, and did it. But uh, it's something that we, uh, we, we like to do, of course, around after our, uh, our dinner. Uh, we think of Canadian Thanksgiving. Um, one of the things that comes to mind is um, football. Okay. Uh, I know the American Thanksgiving, they're big on football, but Canadian CFL, I know they have a big game on Monday, uh, the Thanksgiving Classic. And uh, a number of things that are uniquely Canadian around Thanksgiving time. Um, it, it's a national televised parade, the Kitchener-Waterloo Oktoberfest. That kind of symbolizes uh, uh, oct um, the harvest and uh, Thanksgiving. And of course, I mentioned the, the CFL Classic, uh, the Thanksgiving Classic. But as I did some uh, research and thinking about uh, Thanksgiving and some of the history in, uh, about Canada, uh, it traced it back all the way to 1578, when uh, the voyage of Martin Frobisher from England was in search of the Northwest Passage. And it was a stirred voyage to uh, the Frobisher Bay area, which was in the Baffin Island, which is now in the uh, present territory of Nunavut. And uh, he set out with the intentions of setting uh, up a small settlement. And they left England with 15 ships. And unfortunately, the one ship that carried almost all their supplies uh, to create the settlement uh, hit an iceberg and sank. And so they lost a lot of their supplies and couldn't continue the journey to, to create the settlement. But yet before they headed back to England, they stopped and they celebrated and they worshiped God and they had communion. And they praised and thanked God for the safety that they did have. And that was recorded back in 1578. Some of the other uh, traditions from the Canadian um, Thanksgiving goes uh, later in the French settlers crossed the ocean. They arrived in Canada with Samuel de Champlain in 1604. And uh, he held a huge feast of thanks. And this was formed as the Order of Good Cheer. And they held feasts with uh, the First Nations neighborhood. And they, brought, they came together and they shared their food. Uh, another, uh, this happened on a regular basis. It didn't become a tradition yet. But in 1879, Thanksgiving was celebrated in either late, late October, early November. And uh, the dates of celebration changed several times until uh, 1957, when uh, Canada made it an official date on January 31st, 1957, a proclamation was issued stating, Thanksgiving was to be a day of general thanksgiving to Almighty God for the bountiful harvest for which Canada has been blessed. And uh, yeah, amen to that. I don't think we see that same type of celebration uh, in Canada today. We see the celebration of thanksgiving, but I think it's taken away from giving Almighty God praise for the bountiful harvest that we have. Um, the American Thanksgiving, I was looking at a, a little bit of the history of that, and it really has some similarities when the pilgrims came over, uh, have some similarities to the Jewish holiday called the Sukkot, which is S-U-K-K-O-T, which was a Jewish feast of the tabernacles. 
Um, the same way these people were persecuted, persecuted in Europe, left Europe, came to the new world, and they came and celebrated God for the beauty of the thanksgiving and of the food and um, for, for the provision that God has provided them. Similar way, the Israelites, when, when they left Egypt and they entered the promised land, they celebrated the Feast of the Tabernacles and they celebrated and thanked God for, for their uh, harvest, for their freedom, for their provision, and for what God has given to them. So it's interesting to note um, the different history that Canada has and the States has uh, in the history of Thanksgiving, but noting that it does go back to biblical times and how we have lost that. Um, and this morning I want to talk about that. And one of the things that, one of the verses in the Bible that really talks about praise and Thanksgiving is Psalm 100. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn to that or you can follow along on the screen as we look at Psalm 100. And it says this, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. I think Psalm 100 ranks um, only second to the 23rd Psalm as far as popularity. And some of you have maybe remembered this Psalm from your early childhood days in Sunday school and you may have memorized it. But I think it's, it's very brief, it's very concrete, it's very straightforward. And it gives us specific directions as to what God would want us to do. And so I want to suggest four different things that we can learn from this psalm in order on how to celebrate Thanksgiving. And the first one is shout to the Lord. The second is worship or serve the Lord with gladness. The third is know that the Lord is God. And then we want to enter his gates with thanksgiving. They're all action verbs. And they're all within each of our abilities. So I want to entertain that this is an outline as we delve into, as we delve into this uh, psalm this morning. Before we go any farther, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, again, this opportunity that we can freely come here to worship and to celebrate you. And as, Father, we celebrate Thanksgiving this weekend and what that all entails. We want to take some time to rightly understand the meaning of Thanksgiving and where it has come from and who that Thanksgiving is for. And Father, as we look through these verses and as we look at this chapter, and as, in fact, if we look throughout your word, you are the author and the one that is due the thanksgiving. And this morning we praise you, and we thank you for that. So before we go any farther, Father, we ask that you would bless our time together. May the words that come out of my mouth, may they be yours, and may you touch and penetrate hearts this morning for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the first one is shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. This author and um, pastor, uh, Walter Underwood, in his book, The Twelve, he shares this story about going to a Dallas Cowboys game. He's a Dallas Cowboy fan. He lives in the Dallas area. And he was given some tickets, and he was seated in one of the end zones, way up at the back, and could hardly see the field. He was so frustrated. But something caught his eye, and he started to watch a man that was sitting just a few rows in front of him. And just about on every play, this man would jump out of his seat and he'd always either point to an official or a player and scream at the top of his lungs. And I'm sure some of you can think, well, okay, maybe I can relate to that as a parent who, uh, who plays in sports and maybe he's been to the hockey rink or maybe out the soccer field or coming to watch their son or daughter play in the gym, uh, basketball or volleyball or whatever. But later in the fourth quarter, the score was tied. The Cowboys had the ball. 
It was do or die, now or never. And all of a sudden, the man turned to the fans around him. And he started leading everyone in a cheer. And for the first time, Dr. Underwood said he saw the man's face. And then he recognized him as a member of his congregation. And then he said, I can't remember ever seeing him that animated on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and I thought about that. Make a joyful noise, the psalmist says. Don't just whisper or mumble or stir around. Maybe you're afraid you're going to disturb the person next to you. But shout with all your might. Let the whole world know that the sovereign God of all creation is with us, that he loves us, and that he's on our side. Shout for joy to the Lord. That's the first step. The second is this. Worship or serve the Lord with gladness. And before you start to nod your head and say, yeah, I do that. I, I, I work in Sunday school. I help with the youth. I, I serve here. I'm an usher. I do that. I, 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 yeah, I'm good. I'm, just think about the implications. God is all-powerful. What can you do what can you possibly do for God that, can't, that God can't do for himself? God is all-knowing. What tidbit of wisdom could you possibly share with God that God already doesn't know far better than you? All creation belongs to God. From the highest mountain range to the very deepest ocean, from the highest continents from across the world to the tiny molecules or the cell. So what can you possibly give to God that God doesn't already own? So then, the question is, what does it mean to serve or to worship God? I think first, it means to give what you have of your symbol as a symbol of gratitude and devotion to him. To serve and to worship God is to give what you have, to give him your best, not your seconds, but your very best, your time, your talent, your gifts of service with a joyful heart. It's an attitude of gratitude. It's also to serve him in the name of Christ. You know, in the parable of the great judgment, Jesus here commands the faithful for showing kindness to those in need. And he says to them, he goes, I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. And then the disciples, the faithful, all out, when did we see you, Lord? And then he said, and as much as you did it to the one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it unto me. What's he saying? To serve with gladness is to be a cheerful giver. Lending a hand, a helping hand to those in need. Showing mercy to those who are struggling. Practicing random acts of kindness wherever you go. It's not just out of obligation or out of duty, but out of gratitude for what God has done for you. <laughs> I once heard that one of the most liberating phrases that you can learn is this, and it's, God is God and you're not. God is God and you're not. And in two ways that helps us. It lifts the weight of the world from your shoulders and sets you free in trying to res be responsible for things over which you have no control over. God is God and you're not. It's not all up to you. The second thing is, is that it limits the power and authority that we give to others. 
no matter how imposing or wise that they may seem, they're not gods either. It doesn't matter what position that somebody holds or what title or prominence or power or wealth. They are just like everyone else. God is God and you're not. So remember that the next time your world is crashing down and it goes into pieces and everyone is looking you to hold it together. Remember it when next time you're around a bunch of very important people and they act like they just hung the moon. Remember that. There's a, a passage in the book of John that sums that up nicely. And it's when the temple leaders got wind of John the Baptist. And they send out some people, a delegation to investigate to see who this really to see who this guy is and what's he all about. And they found him and they asked him, Who are you? And John replies, I am not the Christ, but I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. He understood. God is God, and you're not. And that's what the psalmist is reminding us when he says, know that the Lord, it is God. It is he who has made us. And we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. With that in mind, the psalmist concludes and he says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness endures forever. His faithfulness to all generations. This morning, what are you most thankful for? I guess some of the reasons that we can be thankful for come in all sorts of forms, shapes, and sizes. There are the biggie ones, of course, the new job, a promotion at work, a birth of a child, a celebration of a marriage. But there are countless of other reasons to be thankful that we often take for granted, such as our, our health, our love, and support of friends and family, a safe community in which we live in, the freedom that we have here in Canada, the abundance that we have here in Canada the freedom that we have this morning to worship and to praise God. The psalmist encourages us to be mindful of all of God's gifts, great and small, and to be thankful. And how important that is. What are you thankful for this morning? I, uh, I once heard that it's physically impossible to be stressed out and thankful at the same time. Okay, it has to do with our uh, endorphins or, or, or something like that. So I, I read this, that next time try this. In the midst of a stressful day, just take a minute break, find a quiet place, okay? Breathe deeply, holding your breath for a few seconds, and then exhale slowly. And as you gently relax, just think about all the things that you've been thankful for. And then just like that, your stress will be gone. Now I'm sensing that many of you are stressed because I am seeing smiles all over the place and go at home. <laughs> so I want you to try that this week. But I want you to think, what are you most thankful for? More than anything else this morning, be thankful for a God who loves you, warts and all. And he's proven that love beyond our doubt by sacrificing his only son to redeem us from our sinful nature and to reconcile you to himself. 
He wants that loving relationship with you. Be thankful. So take a moment. Make a list of things that you think you can be thankful for. And then offer them up to the Lord in praise and thanksgiving. As Pastor John said, as we started off the service, in a few minutes, we're going to have some time for you to be able to do that, to share with one another and to share with God what you are thankful for. Luke tells of a story how Jesus entered a village, and there he met 10 lepers. Luke 17, 11 to 19. You can follow along. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into the village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. And they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleaned. One of them, when he saw he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Sorry. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Again, it's a matter of attitude and gratitude. Taking stock of your life and how God has created you in his image and has empowered you with the Holy Spirit, has blessed you with gifts of creativity, with imagination, with love. And above all, to recognize how God has proven his love once and for all through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That opened the door to a loving, lasting relationship with God and all his creation. I'll mention the name Henry Mancini. Some of you will remember that name. He was a great songwriter. And I know I'm, I'm dating myself here a little bit. But he, when he turned 65, his daughter Felice composed a little poem to give to her dad. And he, they set it to music. And the Carpenters um, liked it so much that they recorded it and put it on one of their album, albums. And the words go like this, and I am not going to try to sing it. You will be thankful for that. But the words go like this. Sometimes not often enough, we reflect upon the good things. And those thoughts always center around those we love. And I think about those people who mean so very much to me, who for so many years have made me so very happy. And I count the times I've forgotten to say thank you and just how much I love them. Powerful words, giving thanks. As we prepare to celebrate Thanksgiving this year, I want you to take a moment to marvel at the beauty of God's creation, to bask in the warmth of God's love for you, and to be grateful but never forget that Christ died for you in order to bring you from death to life. Don't forget to say and thank that you're grateful. And how can we do that this morning? Remember those four things from Psalm 100. We can shout for joy to the Lord. Worship and serve the Lord with gladness. Know that the Lord is God and you can enter his gates with thanksgiving. Let me pray. 
Father, this morning we, we are in awe of you. We want to praise you. We want to thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you that we can take this time this morning to give praise where praise is due, where thanks is given to where thanks is due. And that is only to you for the goodness, for the love, for the gift that you have given to us. And in just a few minutes as we come around a different table than what we're planning on feasting on, maybe later today or tomorrow, but a table of remembrance, a table of remembering the ultimate gift of what Christ has done for us. Lord, we want to say thank you. We thank you for your word and how it instructs us and that we're just not making this up, but this is your words to us in how to live. And Father, we, we apologize for not being so thankful. We want to give you the praise and thanks that ultimately you are due. And so, Father, here as we continue to worship and sing this morning as we share and as we partake in your table, hear our hearts, hear our voices of gratitude and help us to live every day with that attitude of gratitude. We love you and we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. It is our desire to encourage you through this program. If you do not yet belong to a church, we'd love to have you come and connect with us. We have programs for all ages. There is a spiritual need, or if you have been blessed through our service, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact us during regular office hours by phone, or you can email us. Thank you for watching our service. May God bless you.